Hello everybody, today we're going to be covering section 9.6, which is on ocean warming. The learning objective for today is that you can explain the causes and effects of ocean warming, and some of the essential knowledge that you're going to gain is what causes ocean warming, the effects that it has on marine species, and specifically we're really going to look at coral as like an example, because they're important and ocean warming very much impacts them. So let's first kind of talk about the idea of atmospheric warming versus ocean warming. In some of our past notes, we have talked about reasons why we are getting atmospheric warming. And I want to make sure that you're aware that when the atmosphere warms, this also means that the ocean warms. It's something that happens at the same time. Because as the atmosphere warms, that heat is transferred to the ocean. The ocean is going to absorb the heat that is radiated back to Earth by the greenhouse gases. Um, and so if we look at this diagram here, this is going to be showing our change in the ocean heat content. So areas that are more yellowish or reddish are areas where we're getting an increase in heat. And then blue is going to be decrease. Now the blue areas are mostly going to be because these are areas where we're getting like melting of ice, for example, like up here by Greenland. And so that cools it down. But for majority of the ocean, we are going to be seeing colder uh, or sorry, warmer. It is going to be getting warmer in all of these other areas where we're seeing like a warmer shift in color. Now, the ocean is going to absorb a lot of Earth's heat because of the specific heat the high specific heat of water, which means the fact that water can hold on to heat and can absorb a lot of it and can, um, like when it warms, it's not something that just like takes on heat and drops it and fluctuates. It's going to be slowly taking it on and holding on to it. Um, and this is a just basic principle of water. And because of this, it's estimated that like 90% of Earth's warming has been occurring in the ocean. So even though we're already seeing atmospheric warming, we're also seeing a really high number amount of it happening in the oceans, um, even before maybe some, because air does not have as high of a heat capacity. And so the oceans are going to warm, they're going to hold on to that warmth, and we're going to see a lot of it occurring there. Now, as we've talked about in our 9.5 notes, uh, and talked about way back in unit four, we are going to have our thermohaline circulation distributes the heat that I'm observed at surfaces. So as the ocean is mixing, if we're getting this warming on the top, it's also going to be distributed down into the water because we're constantly having this mixing in other areas of earth at different depths. So it's not just like warm staying on the top, it's getting all mixed in throughout the entire ocean. Now, this can also transfer back to the atmosphere. Um, so just kind of keep in mind, this is like a constant back and forth between the atmosphere and the ocean. And as one warms, the other warms, the heat gets kind of traded back and forth. And so it's kind of this continual where the atmosphere and the ocean are both warming and contributing to the warming of each other. Now, how does this affect, affect those marine species that live in this ocean? So one of the problems is that, as we talked about in Unit 8, warmer water holds less oxygen. Now, these marine organisms need oxygen in order to do cellular respiration and stay alive. And so as we're having less oxygen, this causes respiratory stress, or it can even lead to suffocation if there really isn't enough oxygen for them. Um, additionally, you're also going to have migratory routes and mating seasons can be altered, especially for whales. So their reproductive timing is often tied to temperature changes. So as it is being disrupted, this is going to make it so that they are... Um, not reproducing at ideal times. Like if it's warmer, you want to have these warmer times when you are reproducing. And so if everything's getting warmer, you don't really have this natural ebb and flow for reproduction, especially like fish are really susceptible to this. But this diagram here just shows like a whole ton of options where we are going to have the gray whales having to have farther migrations to get to those cool waters. Um, Leatherback turtles are going to lose their habitat areas. Green turtles, their sex ratios are determined by temperature, so that's going to have an impact. Um, there's like all sorts of impacts. Um, I also teach marine biology. I have so many more examples if you would like them. Just ask. 
I would love to talk about them. Um, but these are just kind of a few examples here of problems. Now we also get habitat loss. Um, for example, coral bleaching with heating oceans, which I'll talk about in a couple slides more. We also start getting these shallow, shallow um, sunny waters that are ideal for algae and coral start to become deeper from ice melt. So this is going to be changing our habitats and they're not going to be as they were before we started having all of this warming. Also, it's going to lead to more toxic algae blooms. We have this like blue-green algae that prefers warmer waters and in warm temperatures, it can have algae blooms. Um, now, we've learned a lot about algae blooms from eutrophication. We have talked about it when we have extra, excess nitrogen and phosphorus, but you can also get algae blooms from excess like warm temperatures. So all of the lovely things we've learned about eutrophication can occur with these warmer temperatures. But also, this algae that is blooming can be toxic, which can be a problem for those humans trying to eat the animals, but it will kill fish, it will destroy shellfish, and um, yeah, it's toxic. It's going to be poisoning. So this picture here on the left, that is what a lovely little toxic algae bloom is going to look like. Um, and it's going to be killing those marine species that ingest it. And again, it can also be similar to what we see with eutrophication, where this bloom blocks sunlight, leads to hypoxia, and all. hopefully you're very familiar with this whole cycle of algae blooms and all the bad things that come with them. Um, but this can also happen with warming temperatures. So coral bleaching. Um, so what a coral reef is, is it is actually a mutualistic relationship between coral and a photosynthetic algae called uh, zooxanthellae. So coral is the actual animal, and this coral has the algae living in it. This algae is going to, it does photosynthesis, so it supplies sugar for the coral, and then the coral supplies carbon dioxide and also um, this detritus nutrient. And so they work together in this mutualistic relationship. Now, algae have a really, really narrow temperature tolerance, and they will leave the reef when the temperature rises. So this is going to be a healthy coral reef. Uh, it's going to have color to it because it's going to have algae. The orange part is going to be the animal. Well, the little bubbles are the animals. And then the green part is going to be the algae in there. When the temperatures get up, the algae is going to become stressed. They're no longer in their ideal temperature. They're going to leave because they don't want to be in an area where they're not thriving. Now, the coral is going to be bleached. This white coral color just means the algae has been gone. But the problem is when the algae is gone, the coral just lost its food source. So the whole thing is going to die soon. When you see coral bleaching, it means that it is dying or is already dead. So if you see white coral, that coral is bleached is dying. Now also, um, it's not just temperature from oceans warming. You can also have pollutants from runoff, like sediment, pesticides, sunscreen, can also force algae from the reef. Basically, these algae are ready to leave as soon as their conditions are not good, which leaves the coral behind not having this food source. So the coral is going to lose its color and become stressed and more vulnerable to disease without this food source. And eventually, it's going to starve and die. And this diagram right here kind of shows you like all of the things that can impact this. I mean, we just talked about that thermal stress, also the idea um, that we can have like some changes from pollution, but you can also have like sedimentation or sea levels rise, which is going to smother the coral. Um, when we have changes in storm patterns due to that thermohaline circulation issues and the jet streams um, that can destroy reef structures, in increased runoff of fresh water can cause these like sediments, murky, not ideal water areas. Um, and then we can also get ocean acidification because of carbon dioxide, which we will talk about in our other set of notes, where you're getting lower pH, which is going to impact the structural integrity of this coral. So, I mean, I mostly explain coral beaching, but we got all of these things that happen with climate change and coral reefs. So this is going to be your practice FRQ for 9.6. I want you to describe one climate change related threat to coral reef ecosystems. And then I want you to describe one climate change related threat to a marine species other than coral. 
that's going to be a practice heifer here on 9.6. And these were your notes on 9.6 about um, ocean warming.